So sovereign credit rating. Uh, what is a sovereign credit rating? The sovereign credit rating is an independent assessment of the credit worthiness of a country or sovereign entity. Sovereign credit ratings can give investors insights into the level of risk associated with investing in the debt of a particular country, including any political risk. So this, uh, this sovereign uh, rating uh, essentially uh, requires foreign direct investment. Because a country go for foreign direct investment, it will positively influence their balance of payment position. The balance of payment position will be favorable uh, after uh, uh, this foreign direct investment. So the foreign direct investment, before foreign direct investment, the investors will check the uh, latest sovereign rating of uh, any, any countries. So after that, <clears throat> they could make a conclusion that this country is uh, investment friendly or uh, a country is like a safe haven for investment uh, or something like that. So at the request of the country, a credit rating agency will evaluate its economic and political environment to assign it a rating. So obtaining a good sovereign credit rating is usually essential for developing countries that uh, want access to funding in the international bond market, especially international bond market. So this is one scenario, but uh, uh, all the means all the segments means including equity derivatives, uh, uh, other uh, connected areas. Uh, the foreign direct investors, especially ADR and GDR, American deposit receipts, global deposit receipts, uh, and foreign uh, currency convertible bonds. These are the instruments which essentially requires credit rating, sovereign credit rating. So all the countries are vigilant uh, on uh, for getting good rating by this uh, from these agencies. So need of sovereign credit rating. So in addition to issuing bonds in external debt market, another common motivation for countries to obtain sovereign credit rating is to attract foreign direct investment is already discussed. So foreign direct investment is a major, uh, major uh, purpose uh, for getting the sovereign credit rating. So many countries seek ratings from the largest and most prominent credit rating agencies to encourage investors confidence so uh, the the beginning in which at the beginning we were discussed the 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 brand value of uh, credit raters here it is also important the brand value of the raters are important for to get the sovereign rating who will be uh, the rater a country so standard and poor's moody's and uh, fitch rating are the three most influential agencies these three companies, uh, uh, basically, uh, they based on US base, and uh, uh, these are the three most dominant uh, credit rating agencies in the world. So these three agencies are uh, writing the countries. So significance of sovereign rating. When ratings provide sufficient information, they help investors in making reliable risk assessments. So they also benefit governments, savers, and intermediaries, as well as regulatory bodies by increasing transparency and improving the efficiency of the allocation of financial resources. So credit ratings are especially important for developing countries, which usually rely on external resources to finance their investment. The India, China, like countries, the credit rating is important because these two countries are uh, most important in terms of getting a foreign direct investment so uh, the last day uh, i mean yesterday hindu uh, you might have experienced that india is the number one uh, means position even though the covid pandemic we are getting a lot of foreign direct investment from the uh, foreign countries uh, you might have experienced we the, the baiju the startup baiju they have got uh, a lot of foreign direct investment in this period so uh, Yesterday or the day before yesterday, I have noticed that there is an article which uh, uh, which came up 
in Hindu that is more indirect investment is very, very uh, uh, sound position in this period uh, to India. So we can uh, understand the reasons behind this foreign indirect investment are increased in, especially in this pandemic period to Indian uh, startups or uh, something related areas. So consequence of unfavorable rating, an unfavorable rating, on the other hand, cannot only impede growth, but also damage economic and political stability by increasing the cost of borrowing. So you might have experienced that if a, if a Moody's rating or a uh, Standard & Poor's rating on the, in India, soon after the uh, rating, the next day, the capital market uh, the, maybe react uh, based on the uh, rating score. If the rating was poor, means as compared to the previous year's rating, the stock market will be like a coupling effect uh, in connection with the rating. The stock market may be down if the rating uh, rating position is uh, lower. The stock market may be up, up the rating may be improved. So this kind of way the stock market uh, react uh, to the rating. The rate is perceptions. Uh, there are currently three leading credit rating agencies uh, that provide sovereign credit ratings. These are Fitch, uh, Moody's and Standard & Poor already discussed. Due to the increased importance of credit ratings, these agencies have become a target for criticism concerning conflicts of interest, lack of transparency and erroneous rating, especially prior to financial crisis. So, this statement is important. Uh, there is there's a lot of criticism on the rating by these agencies. Already we have mentioned. In fact, it has become commonplace to suggest that sovereign credit rating do not reflect the economic fundamentals in a realistic and sufficient manner. So, you know, uh, the sovereign credit rating do not always reflect the economic fundamentals in a realistic and sufficient manner. Because of these agencies are biased while in the process of rating or some external influence uh, may also influence rating. External influence means they are uh, basically from the US uh, and their comparison standards may be differ different. Uh, so if they compare the same standards with the developed countries to a developing country, there is a problem. So the GDP, uh, and export rate, import rate, and employability rate. Uh, these are the variables. The same variables they are uh, measuring uh, for a developing country and underdeveloped country. The result may be wrong. So, uh, uh, this statement is important. So, uh, the European Commission President, uh, Reuters uh, 2011, that is citation, the Russian Finance Minister, the Telegraph 2015. So, these were the reports, uh, uh, I mean, these were the reports uh, came up. The Chinese Finance Minister, Bloomberg 2016, the Turkish President, uh, Reuters 2016, and India's Chief Economic Advisor, Times of India 2017. So these are the uh, speeches, uh, I mean, speech cited, have all alleged that the CRS were biased against their home countries. Okay, so remember, uh, these, uh, these are the uh, important people commented uh, against this uh, rate's uh, lack of transparency or bias. Then surprised rating. Uh, some countries may be surprised or some investors may be surprised after the rating uh, is announced. Such claims can be made by just looking at the spatial distribu distribution of the ratings. For example, we see now Middle Eastern and North African countries. It's called MENA. Uh, short form is MENA. Middle Eastern and Middle East and North African countries with triple 
A score. We see no Middle Eastern and North African countries with triple A scores, despite the fact that there are several good candidates such as Kuwait, UAE, and Qatar. So these countries are especially economically sound, but we could not find that these countries getting triple A scores. E even that these countries are so well economically so well as compared to uh, this developed, I mean, so-called uh, countries like US, uh, UK, France, etc., etc. But these countries did not get triple A scores. So that is uh, again a criticism. Also, the transition economies seems to share relatively low credit ratings, mostly set in, in a rather narrow range between double B minus to double, uh, triple B minus. So there are transition economies, you know, India and China is a transition economies. China already proved uh, their ability, but India is as a transition economy. Means transition means developing to developed. So that is a transition stage. So these countries are also getting the lower rate. Again, the average credit rating of Central and South Asian countries is B plus, while that of Pacific region countries is A plus, which represent quite a large difference. And uh, you know, the, the, the Pacific Asian region countries are getting A plus by a uh, while uh, the Central South Asian countries is B plus. So there is a, a remarkable uh, biases uh, has been uh, proved uh, in this credit rating of these agencies. In rating style, uh, in the process of assigning and monitoring sovereign credit worthiness, credit rating agencies perform various analysis and estimations based on data provided by different national statistical sources in the US as well as international sources. A general discussion of their methodology and the indicators used is provided in their respective publications. And you can see their publications, they show uh, their methodology of rating. So both, I mean, all these companies, all the three companies, which Moody and S&P using their own mechanism and they have published their methodology. So we can refer that, means countries can refer that. And if the country is satisfied with their methodology, the country can approach for rating. So these indicators include a large number of quantitative variables such as GDP per capita is one of the variable, most important variable, external debt. So what about the debt of a particular country and default history? If, if a country committed any default uh, after getting loans from IMF or IBRD or IDA or some other agencies, as well as qualitative variables such as government transparency, institutional quality, these are also qualitative variables uh, while looking on for a rating. After determining which variables include CRIs as in specific weights to each indicator, means this is very important. Some raters uh, giving more weights to some variables means the, the weights assigned to variables are important. So, so focus point that GDP sometimes giving more emphasis as compared to the uh, other factors. So weights are also different. It means uh, we can interpret that there is no equal weightage to these variables. So weights are assigned uh, depends on the rater's perception. So hope you understand the weights means GDP sometimes they, they have given multiple weight uh, and sometimes the, the external debt may, may have given small weights means single weight. So default history may be again multiple weight. So the weights are different. The highest grade by which Moody's and S&P are uh, AAA, capital A, small a, uh, AA and AAA in that order. Means these are the rating, means highest grade given by the Fitch, Moody and S&P. Uh, AAA, a, this is a, the Fitch is like uh, AAA, Moody's, capital A, uh, two small a, and SRMB again triple A, that is highest order. So these are given to small number of countries with the lower credit risk. So only small number of countries, small uh, quantity of countries, they have secured this rating, this highest rating. As the risk of default increases, 
the country receives a lower credit rating such as B and C. So you can remember India's rating. Uh, the lowest scores are D, C, uh, D respectively, which are assigned to countries already in default. Means uh, Fitch, the lowest score is D, Moody's, the lowest score is C, and SNP is the lowest score is D respectively, which are assigned to countries already in default of some or all other debt obligation. Means the committed default uh, after taking a loan from IMF or IBRD or IDA. So, if the country committed default, they are categorized as D, C, D respectively as Fitch, Moody and s &P. So, these are the rating style, highest and smallest, the lowest scores and, uh, you know, the, the variables, GDP, per capita, external debt, default interest rate, etc, etc. So, the methodology used by three CRS, credit rating agencies, ultimately the same. Uh, so, the studies proved that the methodology is almost same. However, there are some differences in the approach taken by each agency and in the weights assigned to various determinants of the rating. For example, SNP assesses five main sovereign rating factors on a six point scale, means they have five factors, and these factors were being rated as six point scale. We have Learn five point scale, six point scale, and seven point scale. So, SNP assessed uh, the six point scale uh, rating, while Moody's initial sovereign credit rating is based on four key factors. And SNP used six factors, means five factors, and Moody used four factors. So, Fish, on the other hand, employs sovereign rating model as the starting point for assigning sovereign rating. Okay. So, their methodology is slightly different uh, for rating. So criticisms of our methodology, the above methodology has been criticized on two grounds. First, it is argued that the rating process is not transparent because the CRA do not give details regarding how they assign specific weights to different indicators. So it is argued that the rating process is not transparent because the CRA do not give details regarding how they assign specific weights to different indicators. Uh, means they do not give details regarding the weights assigned to different variables. So that should be explained, but they unable to explain these weights assigned to variable because why they are they have given uh, more weights to some variable and why they are given less weights to these weights assignment simply uh, affect the rating score of the countries. So they simply uh, do allocate weights without proper explanations. So second, some authors suggest that the rating may be based on judgments and perceptions of the analyst towards certain countries, which makes the nature of things, uh, I mean, these ratings highly subjective. Uh, means some qualitative variables they have used, and this is judgments and perceptions of the analyst. And this uh, analyst perceptions or analyst biases sometimes influence the rating. So that way the study studies went. I mean, there are citations, uh, there are studies which have proved that the analyst biases influences the rating. So this is a rating uh, table, high quality means or, uh, this, uh, I think it's not visible. This is the three rating agencies. I can show you something. Okay, these are three agencies, high quality rating and strong payment capacity means different variables, adequate payment capacity, likely to fulfill obligations means uh, high quality is the top, the strong payment capacity is second level and adequate payment capacity is the third level in which the rating also different uh, in different uh, agencies, uh, likely to fulfill obligations with ongoing uncertainty. High credit risk means these are the different hierarchies of rating. 
the better country get the high quality rating and second one is strong payment capacity like your examination grades a plus a double plus a b simply we can compare with the examination grades and uh, here it is interpretations also high quality strong payment capacity the second one adequate payment capacity the in downward it is like uh, the risk is also increased likely to fulfill obligations with ongoing uncertainty this way we can interpret the rating high credit risk very high credit risk very high credit risk means c plus uh, for fitch and uh, ca for uh, standard and poor and cc plus for moody and near default with recover possibility and in default so in default means triple d uh, for one agency and other c second one and the d for the other agents so this is the uh, table i mean uh, uh, we can interpret based on this rating so the rating result score only uh, shown in the news purpose so we can interpret this way okay so any questions you can ask me right now